Well, all right. right. And welcome back, guys. It should be Paul Berlino here, and uh, we have Crystal Durant, Tommy Von Voigt on hand as well. And welcome to 1959. Welcome to 1959. And uh, this is a this is the year things start to change. Oh, start to do. change. They really do. Yeah, the shit hits the fan in '59, and uh, but there's a lot of great records. Yeah, but it's good smelling shit, and I like the fan too, so it all works. Ding. Yeah. Oh boy, there we go. There we go. All right. So, hell, let's just get right into it. Let's get right Tommy into it. Tommy gets to chew or gets to gets to start this one. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, let me get going here. So I've got a couple of honorable mentions again. This, this was such a strong year, just like the previous year, '58. If you remember last episode, I had something like four or five honorable mentions. Uh, same thing goes with '59. So I gotta give shout outs to Teenager in Love, Dion and the Belmonts. Uh, I gotta give a shout out to Come Softly to Me by the Fleetwoods. Absolutely beautiful song. Gorgeous, gorgeous song. Uh, Got to give it up to Donna, Richie Valance, uh, and uh, Dream Lover, Bobby Darren. Oh, yeah, mm. Dream Lover. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I would have been absolutely remiss if I hadn't mentioned those songs. So with, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get right into my top five. Dig it. Yeah. Okay. So, number five. I was, uh, I was a little shocked that last episode when we did 1958... Crystal actually got a Connie Francis mention in before I did. Yeah. I thought I would be the first one and potentially the only one. But, uh, <laughs> I would have thought the only one. Well, you know, then I wasn't alone in my thinking. But uh, number five, Connie Francis, Lipstick on Your Collar. Oh, I love mm. it. I so love good. it. So good. So good. Oh, <laughs> so I, great. I, I, can you listen, know, I can listen to Connie Francis for hours. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah. I'm not that big of a, much of a Connie Francis fan, but that's a pretty... It's kind of a rocking tune. It's a, it's a rocking yeah. tune. And yeah. she's mad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Sassy Connie Francis. Sassy, yes. very yeah. sassy, very spicy. Uh, number four. I think this is. Um, I'm trying to remember if this is the first mention I have for an instrumental, but there will be a few more. Not too many instrumentals will make rare appearances on my list, but uh, theme from a summer place. Percy Faith and his orchestra. Yep. Nice. Absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. song. Gorgeous, gorgeous. song. Um, and coming in number three, coming in hot, the Drifters. There goes my baby. Oh yeah, I know. Oh, that's a good one, right? Ah, oh, so good. <laughs> it's undeniable. So great. Uh, number two, continuing my streak of absolutely stunningly gorgeous songs, the Mystics, Hushabye. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So good. Fifty nine okay. was just killing it, and then a second instrumental on my top five. Fifty nine, not just one instrumental, two, two. instrumentals. Tequila. <laughs> Absolutely not tequila. Yeah. No, it is Sleepwalk, Santo and John. Oh, my number one yeah, song yeah, in 1959. One. My so God, great. Sleepwalk. So here's the thing, I, and we're gonna we're gonna come back around to this in later episodes with certain years that that prove more difficult. For the most part, with any given year, there's been one or two songs that when I'm looking through the charts, I'm like, oh God, that song. My God, that song is pushing every button and then some. It's clearly my number one. Some songs just do that to you. Mm -hmm. Sleepwalk by Santo and Johnny is one of those songs. There was just no other song that could have possibly been in the top slot. As much as I love everything else on my list so much, that song it's right. stunning. It just all oh, yeah. feels. I, I agree. For most of yeah. my years, I had that experience. Like, okay, I love all ten of these, but this is so obviously on the top. Yeah, yeah. and that was one of those for me. Yeah, yeah. So there we yeah, go, my top five one. 59. Very nice. All right, so Crystal, Crystal's right. next. I'm next. Okay, so my number five song. I really, I was thinking about. I really wanted to do ten for this because there's so much great. There are a lot of good songs, but I fought it. So um, my well, give us a bunch of runners up. Well, I didn't even bother to write them because it would have been like fifteen songs. <laughs> so uh, my number five song is Sea Cruise by Frankie oh, Ford. Yeah. I love it. My number four song is Mac the Knife by Bobby Darin. Oh. And I understand why a lot of people don't like that song, because they're kind of sick of it. That's it's what a little I've played been told. out. It's, kind of, it's played out. But there's just something about Bobby Darin's voice and the way he's trying so hard to be Frank Sinatra. Hey, what's oh, this? Bobby Brown. Hey, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it works. It's working for him, though. It's, and then what's even more crazy is when Kevin Spacey <laughs> imitated him in that movie... And was exactly like Bobby Darren, trying to be like Frank Sinatra. Yeah. He nailed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bobby Darren has the chops. So, so awesome. Uh, my number three song is What a Difference a Day Makes by Dinah Washington. 
which is one of my all-time favorites of hers. If you have her greatest hits, do you have her greatest hits? I don't. I don't have any yeah, of her stuff. Dinah Washington's greatest hits. You've heard this song, though. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just, her voice is, oh, man, it's, oh, it's just so great. Anybody so, who's watched TV has heard it because it's been on TV commercials. That is true, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, my number two song is What I Say by Ray Charles. <laughs> well. Because <laughs> you have to have Ray Charles. How do you not have Ray Charles? And that song is a banger. So great. Especially it's in parts one and two as well. And it's funny because, I mean, you guys know this. It's like they're in the studio like, hey, blah, blah, come on, Marge, you better not. <laughs> That's so great. And then my number one song is I Only Have Eyes for You oh, by the Flamingos. Oh, sure. yes. Which, again... Oh my god, it's so great. Yes, I love that, is, that, that song. Is, yeah. That's Ooh, a good one. So awesome, yeah. So that's my list. Okay, looks like it's my turn next. All right, then. Bring it on, Dr. Bertolino. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Go on to my, uh, my iPhone 4 or whatever, 6 or whatever the hell this is. <laughs> this is my old iPhone. I'm shooting on my current iPhone. I have this old ass one from my lists here. For those of you who want, who want the. Uh, the inside info. Oh, the gearhead info. Yeah. Okay, so at number five I have for 1959, Come Softly to Me hey. by the Fleetwoods. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The Fleetwoods, they're the threes company of 50s pop groups. <laughs> two, two women and a guy That's and a man. Right, and yeah. they wrote this song themselves. Yeah, you know oh, they what's did? Up. They wrote this, and it was originally just supposed to be called Come Softly, but the label changed it to Come Softly to Me because... Oh, Come yeah, softly. softly. Yeah, and and yuck, yuck. I believe this was recorded in one of their living rooms, if I recall correctly. Oh, oh really? Okay. It's, on like some amateur recording equipment. It was recorded in a living room. Really? It just, just captured magic. Oh, it, yeah. it adds to it. Yeah. Um, number four, Love Potion number nine oh, by the Clovers. Now, mm. now, I like that one. One of the things that makes me like that one so much is that there's a, 60s, a Beatlesque 60s version by the Searchers that I don't like. Believe it or not, the Beatlesque, like, Total British Invasion version one, I don't like. This one, I fucking love. It just has, like, a more of a... It has, like, this spooky, creepy kind of vibe to it. I completely agree with you on this. I do not like the Searcher's version. Because they're... It's... They're trying... It's just like somebody trying... Somebody covering a song trying to be the Beatles. Beatles, yeah. Who aren't the Beatles. Right. Like, if the Beatles had done it... It might have worked because it would have just been. They wouldn't have just sounded like this copy. They would have been the Beatles doing their own steez. Yeah, yeah. I still the probably would have preferred doing the, the original though. Yeah, the original is much better. Yeah, but either way, the original one. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of that song either, but I yeah. like the original. Yeah, I, well, I never was until I started listening to this one, and I thought, you know, I never liked this song, but I, I just, I like this version. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Number three. Oh man, this is a great song. Kansas City by Wilfer, Wilbert Har- Wilford by Wilbert Harrison. Ugh, yes, yeah. Now, as a kid, I thought this was Fats Domino. Oh, did you really? Yeah, a lot of people, yeah. I, and I totally get it. Um, that's such a... Yeah, because the cadence of it... The t- well, it just it has that rhythm. It has the rhythm of a Fats Domino. It's very New Orleans, yeah. I'm not... Like I'm back and forth with that song. Sometimes well, that, well, this like is it, one of those songs I that I that I didn't really think. Uh, there's going to be so many of those, and I'll be mentioning every time we get to one. But it's one of those songs that I didn't think much of before. It was just kind of like a song that was there that I've just Grown. it just started hitting me the yeah. right way in recent times, you know. Um, now number two, I have "Since I Don't Have You" by the Skyliners. Mm. Oh man. Now this, yeah, this is another. This is yet another one of those songs that it didn't yeah. make much of an impression on me at the time. But now that I'm older, it's just it you know, I, I hear it just completely differently. Yeah. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there is a god awful version by Guns N' Roses. <laughs> oh, that's right. Rest assured, that is not going to be on my 1991 <laughs> or whatever year it is. That would have been 1994. That's from the Spaghetti Incident album, I believe. Okay. Well, well, yeah. yeah, fuck that. I don't vision. know what I'm more afraid of: the fact that you know that, <laughs> or that they did it. Yes, it's just in I, the first I'm like place. that sometimes with musical trivia. Wowza! Yeah. So, okay. my number one. I only have eyes for you. Ah, yeah. By the flamingos. Oh, yes. Nice. Oh, are you kidding me? This is one of those songs. When I made this list, before I even added anything else, I put. This song on there and put number, number one, one next to that's it. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. yeah, and this is one of those songs where 
Yeah, this is one of the most gorgeous tracks ever recorded by anybody ever. And not only is the song great, the performance is great, but the sound of the record. It has so that sound great. that yeah. adds so much it's to just, it. It's like they added magic to it. Yeah. There's a device yeah, they yeah. had in the studio and they turned the magic it's dial. And it just, and, yeah. it's, but it's just what's so the limitations of the, of the gear that they had back then that just added. They were probably frustrated by this, but... It, it adds the record endures all the more yeah. because of it. The things that they were tro- they were probably fighting against. Yeah, it adds character that we we look yeah. back on so fondly. Yeah, everything that we love about the sound of it, they were probably tearing their hair out mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Now, just like <laughs> just like since I don't have you, there is a god awful cover of this song, <laughs> the 1975 version by Art Garfunkel. Oh, god, oh my god! Know that one. Do you oh, remember really? that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah it's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's it so awful. bad. I used to think it was an 80s cover. It's 1975. It sounds like... Oh, it's 75? Yeah. Oh, snap. Because, like, the keyboard has that sort of, like, you know... Tonight I celebrate my love kind of keyboard sound yeah. on it. It's just like, ugh. You see what he's doing here? I'm not... I'm really not. <laughs> no. You did. You did. You didn't know what you were doing. You were doing it subconsciously. You were throwing shade on the 80s. That's what you did. Well, do you like Tonight I Celebrate My Love or whatever the fuck that song is? I mean, I don't love that song, but I don't mind it that much. But uh, no, 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 it's, I am. I'm, Wasn't that Roberta Flack? I will. Yeah, be, but it's like fucking '80s Roberta Flack. I, see, well, he's yeah. doing it again. He's, <laughs> well, that's just a thing. Doing, he doesn't even know he's doing. It's like he can't even help himself. Okay, I am. First of all, I am the gatekeeper. I am going to <laughs> the gatekeeper. Of the, 80s. the '80s shade stops here. When I am present, no, I am shutting that down. Okay, I'm shutting that. Wait till we get to 1980. From 1980 to 1989, it is going to get violent here at As It Should Be Studios. Yeah, <laughs> the Thunderdome. Yeah. I, well, that's the thing. It's kind of pro- pre-programmed into me. It's just like if I say '80s, it's just automatically with like. <laughs> it, and I don't even know I'm doing it. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, that came out of the '80s. He's it's been so doing misplaced it so and inaccurate. It's not like we're talking about something that came from like 1998. If that was the case, I would get it. Well, <laughs> some of us think of 1988 as 1998. Oh well, snap! All right, we should shut this down now. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna table this for now. There's gonna be like uh, quite a few episodes to go before we turn back around. We come back around to this. But we're coming the, back around. That, that said, all joking Ooh. aside, actually, I I've historically always hated the '80s, but in recent times, I've gone back and like compared to the '90s and anything after the '80s You're, are like the fucking yeah. '60s compared to that stuff. So I, I have actually softened up on the '80s, but it is just sort of inborn in me to just go like the '80s, even if I'm not even actually thinking it. But at the he moment. he really has softened up because with my podcast, there's songs where he was like, "Oh yeah," and I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, you'll be you will be surprised you'll when be we surprised, get to the eighties. In fact, yeah. all I'm saying is grumble, grumble, grumble. <laughs> in the jungle. Okay. <laughs> okay, hamburglar. <laughs> That's robble, 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 robble. Oh, robble, robble. Okay, so now we are down to the most hated, our least favorite mm-hmm. songs of 1959, and uh, I'm putting on my glasses because Tommy's about to do his. Or who's next? Uh, I think it uh, starts where I'm starting 59, right? Yes, yeah. I think I think yeah. so. We do, we don't know this. We we just it's work chaos here. Chaos here at As It Should Be Studios. Yeah. World famous. World famous. As it should it's be. World studios. famous chaos at world famous world As renowned. It Should Be Studios. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I also had um, I had a dishonorable mention. Um, I, I there's no way I can let 1959 pass by without uh, giving a, a reverse shout out to Uh Oh Parts One and Two by the Nutty Squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah, you know what? Again, that's something that I've never heard, but by the title alone, I'm with you. Yeah, so, all right, so the Chipmunks had, had like, kind of been, like, a thing yeah. um, with the Chipmunks song, and there were some other Chipmunks singles that came out, like Alvin's Harmonica or some stuff, so it was getting some chart success, so the 50s got a 50s, which means if there's anything that looks like it's making we even $5, do it again. <laughs> we got to get our own version rushed out there, and sometimes it was in the form of the same version like a, a version of the same song and sometimes it was copycat crap or sometimes it was like answer records oh yeah you know right. like if somebody put out a, a record that's about a dance you gotta put out like five other records also about that dance um, so in this case the chipmunks so somebody was like oh okay we can do the same thing except it's not chipmunks uh, ours is completely unique it's uh, nutty squirrels <laughs> and it's and it's cool jazz so it's just like picture or just and some chipmunky voices. Uh oh, uh oh, uh 
uh oh, but pitched up like you know three octaves higher. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh God. for really? like three minutes. And then this, this parts one and part two. Part two is just more of that for like another four minutes. But wait a minute, are there? Is it verse, chorus, verse, or it's just uh ohs? I think the ver- I think the chorus is just, bah, 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 and then it goes okay. back to, uh, I was gonna say, is there is there a, sec- a B <laughs> section or is it just uh-oh. A section, a section all the way through? All- bah, 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 bah. It's basically it's it's psychological warfare, such to the point where. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to my actual my actual <laughs> nominee for worst which, of the year. Which is going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy. But, okay, so psychological warfare. Uh-oh, parts one of two Nutty Squirrels. Years back in a previous life, I was working at a cheesesteak shop. And uh, we like to do things to just make the, 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 the fact that it was a terrible job just a little bit less terrible. So sometimes we would do things with, like, the music we were playing. And one time we made a loop that was just the Star Wars Cantina Band song just endlessly on a CD. And then we had the CD on repeat, and we would just put that on all day. And just to see how long people were there sitting there, how long they could, they could go it. before somebody noticed what, that what was going on. So it actually, we pushed a little too far when we did that with Uh-Oh, Parts 1 and 2 by the Nutty Squirrels just over and over again and this went on for hours just hours and there was just one dude that was a regular customer and he came in and he's eating his cheesesteak and he liked to take his time and he's sitting there and 15 minutes go by 20 minutes go by half hour goes by and at a certain point he just puts his sandwich down and he's just the fuck is going on with the music in here <laughs> and in the background it's just uh oh uh oh and we, I look at my buddy Trevor and we're looking at each other we're like uh oh uh oh we're gonna get fired <laughs> Wow. So that's that's just my runner up. That's my dishonorable wow. mention. So my Strap actual in, people. actual Ooh. worst of the year. Okay. Now the fifties just had to get in one more dose of serious serious chart weirdness before dipping out. I guess so. One version of this this disaster wasn't enough. Got to have two versions charting at the same exact time, and that song would be. The Children's Marching Song, parentheses, Knick-Knack, Taddywhack, by Cyril Stapleton and his orchestra, or Mitch Miller and his orchestra and chorus. Wow. Worst yes. of the year, people. Tick, what is it? Knick-Knack, Knick-knack Taddywhack. Taddywhack. It's exactly what you think it is. Instead of Paddywhack. Yeah. And it's Give a, a children's ball. march. Yeah, and we needed much. two versions of this. Two, in yes, it, yeah. I, I challenge both than two of versions you to find something them. worse. I don't know what they've got coming up. We don't actually show each other, uh, show each other our chart lists no. um, before we do these episodes, no. so everything's a surprise as we read it off. So I don't know if they've actually managed to top my worst of. I'll be impressed if Well, you yours did. sounds pretty terrible. That's awful. Yours sounds pretty terrible. Nick Nack. Nack Yeah. So give it to us, Crystal. Well. All right. I have a runner-up and then a winner. Mm. My first runner-up is Tall Paul by Annette Funicello. <laughs> I would agree. Tall Paul, Tall Paul. What? Yeah. yeah she I put mean, out some come stinkers. On. It's not even true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, talk about, talk about a complete fabrication. Ridiculous. <laughs> But it's just such a dumb idea for a song. Is it worse than First Name Initial by Annette Funicello? <laughs> I think it is, yeah. yeah like, First a, Name Initial I can kind of yeah, tolerate. But she, she put what out about some, Pineapple Princess? some songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that's terrible. Sorry. But I also understand why she would get shitty songs, because she came from the Mickey Mouse Club. Who was taking her seriously? Like, right. she was just a cash cow yeah. with this face in this rack. And just give her, just put her out there, type bikini, make her sing something stupid. <laughs> right. You know, well, like Jamaica ska, I can almost tolerate. <laughs> but it was working. But, but it know. worked, yeah. So. Now, is there, wait, is there more than one version of, of the Jamaica ska? Because I'm familiar with Back to the Beach. Fishbone. Where she does it with it. Fishbone. Yeah. 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 And she, and she sang with them. So that, is that the that only thing. version she did of that song? Or is there an earlier version she did of that? No, it was from the 50s. That's the oh, okay. original. And then she redid it she with did Fishbone it for, back to, okay. for the movie. Yeah. Which is terrible. Don't watch that movie, Back to the Beach, with Frankie and Annette. It is Actually, it's a kind of a, it's a fun movie. I, I have already I taken that advice. I kind yeah. of like Back to the Beach. Or only like scroll through and watch Fishbone jumping around in the sand. No, it's fun. I like the whole thing where they're like, oh, you can come back in 20 years and see Dick Dale play. And No. My winner for the song, most hated song of 1959 is The Battle Hymn of the Republic by the Mormon Tabernacle <laughs> Choir. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Oh, you're bringing it. I mean, what? <laughs> what? You've got... I mean, this is like... It's America. You've got 
a religious singing group singing a song about war. Mm-hmm. Well, and scene. Well, Dad, you just summed it up. This is America. This yeah. is America. <laughs> and who's more pro-war than the religious than set? The religious, yeah. I mean, really. Like, that's it. That's the 19... 19- Ironically. But and anyway. that's why I came out in 1959, because that's like, okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's the last straw for the hippies, and then everything starts rolling around. So, you know, that was actually charted. Yeah. It was high in the chart. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Which, again, crazy white people. Well, this was before everybody got high. Yes. All right, so singles. That, well, actually, no, that's not necessarily true. People were getting high in the fifties like crazy. It just wasn't. Well, yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. Oh, I have I have three here. Hmm. I have three here. My two runners up. Deck of Cards by Wink Martindale. I God, I don't even know Wink it. Wink Martindale, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah he's got to get in there somehow. <laughs> I'm sure it sucks. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, Making Love by Floyd Robertson. Robinson. I don't even know that one. Making love. Wilfred. Wilfred. Um, Floyd Robinson. Making love. Yeah, it's just some terrible song that I, I'm not even going to waste my time describing. Just go listen to it. It sucks. Because, the reason why is because I have to go to my main hated song here. Well, this is the children's marching song, <laughs> Knick Knack Paddywhack by Cyril Stapleton. Yes. Oh. And just, and everything that he said, I have written here. There are two fucking versions of this. <laughs> Not surprisingly, Mitch Miller did one of them. Of course, he always does. <laughs> I ding, sorry, ding, 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 ding. I didn't mean to steal your thunder. No, no, like no, that, no. That's no, that's perfectly okay. I, I think that's hilarious. Is there a worse that. track that charted high? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's it's great and it's hilarious that we both chose I that love because it, it's man. like that is funny. Why wouldn't you choose? Oh, of that? course, I would choose that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Granted. I didn't see yours. Didn't catch my eyes, so I might have chosen that one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty egregious. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, the bad is very bad this year. Yeah, but mm. the good is very good. Yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it really is. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so see, you do see song. eye to eye sometimes. Every now and then. Every now and then. All right. All right. Well, thanks everybody for watching yet another '50s singles of the year video. This is this is the end of the '50s. Should old acquaintance be forgot, you know, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Here. Like yeah. Yeah, so get ready, people, because now we're going to enter the 60s. And, uh... Well, not right now. Next week. Yeah, you have to well, wait until you know, next week. But now we're about but to. We are, we're on deck. Yeah. We're on deck. You got, a, you got a week to get yourself ready. <laughs> yeah, so get ready. Yeah, but we're about to enter the 60s, and that's when things are going to get really good. Because yeah. the biggest uh, change is 10 songs. Yes. Yes, and yeah, and that's actually, this is the last of our five-song list from here on out. At least through the 80s, it's going to be 10 song lists. It's probably going to go back to five in the 90s if we can even manage 90s lists. Well, we're going to, we don't yet know how far into the 90s we're going to go. My prediction will be we're going to kind of fizzle out around 96. No, we have to do all of it. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, it could it could be a really fun just sort of like struggle to it's get through. It could be a struggle. I just can't make any promises. If I got to come to even to the table with even five top songs in 1998 or yeah. 1999, I just We'll see. I don't know. You can. We'll you're see. Gonna, we'll you see. want to see me floundering? That'll. We'll see. <laughs> oh, hey man, I'm floundering in 1990, 91 doing these lists. So, 98. Oh. Whew, that's gonna be rough. Anyway, thank you everybody for watching the videos and thank you for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you subscribe, click the little bell for notifications because you're gonna want those. I promise you. And like and comment and all that kind of shit. And, yeah. uh, he says this every episode. Start, I say this every episode, but you know, this may so be the <laughs> just please just do it. <laughs> but this please. may be the first episode you're watching. You no, may have been like 58, see, 57, yeah. oh, 59. Nine, that's my I'm year. In, yeah. So, so. You know, whatever. So I've got I've got you know certain things you have to do every time, and that's it. And uh, anyway, so see you guys in the 60s. Bye.